What's up, friends? This is Jazz bringing you another countdown video. It was a while since I uploaded one, and I apologize, but I was busy lately. I was thinking, like, a week or so ago, I was watching some reviews on horror movies, and I thought, there's a list of, I want to make a list of five horror villains who I sort of feel bad for, and who should be the real villain of this scenario now. I really thought about it, and the reason I'm making a list, like, the reason why I would feel sorry for villains is that there was a reason they became that way, and it, it's more than what is portrayed now. It, I will allow long-running movies, but, like, sequel movies, but most of these are only seen in one film, respectively. And they don't come back again. So that is kind of a clue. So again, this is the top five villains I sort of feel bad for. And who should be the real villain? Let's get on to number five. Number five is Angela Baker. Only from Sleepaway Camp 1. Now, you're probably wondering, why did I add Angela if I'm only doing it from one movie? And she continues. This is the exception to the continuing franchise thing. I do not feel bad for Angela Baker for the rest of the series at all, but I was debating whether to add her to this list because she just comes right evil. But this Angela alone is a child, and a lot has gone to make her psychotic the way she was. Now, I really think the real villain should be Dr. Martha. Her aunt, or Aunt Martha. What, as you all know, and spoilers again for those who don't, and, like, Martha had actually raised Angela as a girl. She was really her twin brother, Peter. The real Angela died in the accident that happened when they were small children. So technically it's Peter Baker I'm talking about, but it is Angela in that sense. Now, the reason I don't feel bad for her anywhere else is because she she kills anyone who disagrees with her. In this movie alone, anyone who is killed is has been picking on her, and I don't just mean small little things. Like I mean, there was one group of people who died who I felt a little bad for, her, but everyone else deserved it almost. Well, two a group like. A group of kids, like, the kids obviously died. I felt bad for them. They didn't deserve it. They were just being kids. And the boy in the end, his name, I forget his name, but Ricky's friend, he didn't really deserve it. But Angela, or Peter slash Angela, was tortured in his own soul and mind. Not only that, but he, his father was gay. And they, he and his sister witnessed them, you know, doing it. And that traumatized him a lot as well. So he had a lot going for him. But later on, I could care less about what happens to Angela. But in Sleepaway Camp, the original, I just felt so bad that she was brought to doing that. I mean, she wasn't shown doing it on screen in this movie either. So it makes it a little, her a little more relatable, and she just seemed like a normal girl up the end. So you could feel and relate to Angela, right? Honestly, like, the lo she is the lowest on the list because I don't feel sorry for her later on, unlike some of the rest of them on this list or whatever. So anyway, on to number four. Number four is... Billy Lentz from Black Christmas, mainly the 2006 version of it. Now, he is a little bit lower than the previous, or than Angela because, well, he doesn't really appear anywhere else for one, so I don't see him get any worse. Anyway, what happened is, is he was a boy that was born with jaundice yellow skin and because of this his mother hated him and 
Constance Lentz, the mother, is, I believe, the real villain, even though she doesn't appear anywhere in the future, because she tormented Billy, locked him in, uh, the, not the attic, the, yeah, the attic, I believe, locked him in the attic, raped him, incest, in other words, created his sister-slash-daughter, Agnes, and literally, like, would say things like, she's my family now, and so on. And yes, Billy's kills in that were all gruesome, but when he killed, oh, spoilers, sorry. When he killed his mother or his stepfather, they, they deserved it. They deserved it. I, I mean, okay, no, like, I would never do something like that to anyone in real life, but just, to me, justice was served. I felt a little bad for the girls, like, in the future, and I felt a little teeny bit bad for his sister Agnes when she was tortured, like, when things happened when she was a child, when that all happened. But Agnes also became a killer, which I do not feel bad for her like I do Billy, because she was literally treated like a princess compared to him. He had a lot going, bad going for him. He w You could just tell he would not turn out right. I mean, not only was he tortured, but he witnessed his father being murdered by his stepfather. Now, the reason this is still high on the list is that, one, his kills are gruesome, and the majority of the characters, it's not warranted, in my opinion. So, I mean, yes, this probably could have went ahead of Angela, but, you know, he doesn't develop enough for me to really show the top hatred for him. And, like, I mean, his kills were gruesome, but he had a terrible back history. I mean, his mother ruined Christmas for him, pretty much. It ruined his life. Anyway, Billy Lentz is number four on the list, and now on to number three. Number three on this list is Gage Creed. Now, yes, he's a little baby. Why is he still higher than the two other ones? Well, he does a lot of killing, and to be fair, a lot of it is unwarranted. But the reason I feel bad for him at all is that he's a two-year-old, a two- to three-year-old, not even a three-year-old. <clears throat> the real villain, and this is strange for me to say, I believe, is his father, Louis Cree, who was warned, pretty much, not to try to revive a murder to bury him in the pet cemetery. <clears throat> but he did it nonetheless. Yes, I know he did it out of love. I can understand that. But if someone warns you, don't do it. I mean, yes, the fact that Creed is so young is why I feel for him over Billy Lentz or Angela Baker. But I mean, the poor child. I mean, and I mean, the ending when he was, like, re-killed or put down or whatever the father did, like, it just made him sound so innocent. And yes, this is a little more unwarranted than the other two. But I mean, a kid has no real incentive to be evil like this. That is my biggest thing, is that he could have rested in peace, but his father, Lewis, had to bury him in a, an Indian burial ground. He, Lewis was just asking for that to happen. Okay, this is more on what I feel about Lewis Creed right now. But I mean, yes, I'll admit, Gage's kills were pretty gruesome, although they weren't very often. It, like, the, the, the part where Creed is, or Gage is in, was very limited, and that's another reason he isn't known and he isn't brought back, like, any other way. But, I mean, who wouldn't feel sorry for a child, a child, unless they were literally born evil like that? If a child was naturally evil, then goodbye. Like, I wouldn't think of it. I would run for my life, but this child was born of pure innocence, 
and because of his father's mistake, he became the way he was. It's as simple as that. Gage did not deserve it. He was number three on the list. Now on to number two. Number two is Billy Chapman from Silent Night, Deadly Night. Now, yes, you choose him over Gage Creed, I know. But really, Gage, the only bad thing that happened to Gage was he was buried in the Indian burial ground. Billy, he witnessed his mother being raped by Santa Claus, his father being killed by Santa Claus. Again, the real villain, I believe, is Mother Superior. Going back to her. Mother Superior literally didn't take a care in the world about his trauma citation, or trauma side, whatever, however you say it. The fact that his mother and father were gruesomely murdered by Santa Claus, it, she forced him to sit on his lap, spanked him when he punched Santa for a good reason. But I bet you his whole life he was constantly being punished by her. In fact, some words to Billy from Mother Superior. Punishment is good. Punishment is a must. Now, he also has terrible PTSD. Because when he was old enough to get a job, he saw a co-worker of hers getting raped. He first flashes back to his mother. Yeah. That's how the whole, it's not only that, his boss forced him to dress up as Santa. I don't know if he realized the, how his parents died, but why would the, why would someone send Billy to a toy store? Knowing that Christmas, yes, it comes once a year, but it still comes, okay? He had everything going against him there. I mean, he had a terrible childhood in an orphanage. His parents were murdered by someone that a child should idolize. He was kind of made to work in an area where, of course, Santa would eventually show up or Christmas would be celebrated. Yeah. And, oh, remember how I, the words I said that Mother Superior said to Billy as a child? You know what his catchphrase is whenever he kills someone? Punish! Yeah, that's kind of where I definitely think Mother Superior should be the villain. She instilled in the Billy that bad, like, naughtiness should be punished. Match that with the Santa suit. Yeah. Yeah, there has to be a lot of bad coming from that. But yes, I still feel bad for him because if, if it wasn't for everything that went on in his life, you know what, even with with Santa murdering his parents. I think he would have turned out a bit better if Mother Superior hadn't have instilled that message in his head or has at least treated him with a little more compassion. I mean, he might still be traumatized, yes, but you think he would grow up with some better values. Also, there are sequels to where his brother takes over the killer Santa suit. I don't feel bad for him at all. He was a baby when this happened, and I don't know why, but Vicky just seems like a legitimately more evil than Billy did. So anyway, Billy is number two, now on to number one. Number one is Carrie White from Carrie. Now, you're probably thinking, why Carrie over Billy? Like, really, why? Yes, Carrie maybe in some way has hasn't witnessed a murder or like but she was tortured by her own mother. Anything that happened Well actually the real the real enemy is Margaret White again, her villain her mother. And some of the high school students, yeah, they, they deserve it too. But I mean Carrie was raised from a very early age that like, if she sins, she has to go in a closet and pray. Not only that, like, like, the closet is very confined, right? And she's constantly punished by her mother. And 
I mean, also, what is the most sacred thing to a woman in her life? Her monthly, well, not sacred, what is the most important part of a woman growing up? Her monthly cycle. You know how Margaret White handles it? You're bleeding! You must have sinned! Go in there and repent! Repent! How the Why the hell would you do something like that? I mean, I mean, also, Carrie did not know she was on her woman's monthly cycle. Yeah, Margaret didn't really teach her about the woman reproductive system. So, because of that, she looked like a... Looked like an insane person in front of her whole entire gym class because she was crying and screaming and... But who would blame the woman if she was raised the way she was? And I mean, and also the fact she never really starts killing until the very end of the movie. Yes, I know she got over crazy with power and such with her psychedelic abilities, but the only reason she got that crazy was because both her mother and two, I forget the name, two of the high school attendees pouring blood, blood on her. In other words, this is kind of a bullying abuse scenario, in my opinion, but Carrie was literally so innocent and pure, for the most part, before all this, before that one scenario. I mean, Margaret White, you're supposed to protect your child. And I don't mean, oh, the Lord, repent your sin type protect. I mean, like, you have to, she was in her teenage years, didn't know about a period. You have to be honest with her. You have to support her. Instead, put you in her this religious BS. And yes, I have Billy Nolan. That was the male who did it. I can't remember the female at all. But Billy Nolan and the female main antagonist, I not only watched the reviews, literally kept bullying Carrie. Technically, they were getting revenge on getting them suspended or expelled, but what happened with the bathroom incident. But between Bullion and her mother, she had no way of she had no way out of it. So Carrie White is my number one villain I feel bad for and Margaret White all went to school. You're the worst piece of crap I have ever seen in my life. Well I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.